across the panels. I kind of want to jump in. I want to, if everybody can just kind of go around a little bit. Um, I'm Sam Ratner. I'm with Trumbull. Uh, I work with my wife and partner. We have a team of 10 of us. I primarily take care of back office, CEO piece of the business, and listing piece of the business. Uh, Ruth, my wife and partner, she works on the buyer specialist piece inside of the business as well also. We have uh, myself on the listing side, Ruth on the buying side. She has a full-time buyer's agent. We have a brand new agent that's just going through trying to get licensed right now as well also on the team. We have an inside sales associate. All he does is eight hours a day is he's making outbound calls all day long, whether it's through the, gener through the database, through internet lead generation, through the CRM, all of those pieces, circle prospect. And I'm gonna go into a lot of that while we're here for the next hour as well also. I have a full-time transaction coordinator on our team, admin administrator that's trying to oversee all of it. And then I have a database lead generation slash marketing that's all one person in there as well also. And then as we all should have on our team, we have a full-time stager and full-time photographer. They have their own business and their own practice. We always say that they're all partners on our team now. And I don't know if you all use that and use that kind of reference when you're out talking to clients as well also, but what's we only have a few people on here. So if we can kind of just go around, what's everybody's business look like today? Just if we can give a quick 30 second elevator ride about that. How long you been in business? How many units did you do for the year? Stanley? Uh, Stanley, I'm uh, with Keller Williams in Morristown. I've been in the business for about two and a half years. Still need a lot of work in the, on the listing end and the buyer's end. And I'm looking forward to this uh, program that, that I am looking at and to be helped. Thanks. So how much business did you do this year for 2020, Stanley? How many units did you sell? I did not, I did not do much, not, nothing. Nothing, okay. Yes. And what was your goal? My goal was about 20. Okay, uh, I'll come back to that. On the buyer's side, on the buyer's side. Good, okay, I'll come back to that and see how we can help on that. Chris, how about yourself? Chris Brown. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. I, um, I'm, a, I'm a new agent. I've just been in for um, a little over two months. Um, okay. And I'm with Basking Ridge um, in Jersey. With the, uh, oh, nice. Keller. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a feel for um, our audience and speaking to you guys all appropriately. So beautiful. Thanks for being here. Congratulations on getting your license. Tony? Definitely. So, Tony from the Trumbull Market Center, um, I've been doing this like full time since I would say February um, when I last, when I lost my job. Okay. Um, I had my license, but I wasn't doing anything with it. But February, sure. I didn't have an income. And I, that's literally when I started lead generate calling. Um, this year, I didn't do as well as I thought. I, I closed eight transactions, but. Um, Wonderful. So, but next year, I mean, I'm, I would love to do at least like 24 transactions, which is two a month. Okay. Um, I'm much farther at this point here right now than I was last year in December. So I think it's doable. Um, I mean, the biggest part for me was I didn't take action. I had my license and I didn't take action, but in it's February, I didn't have yeah. an income. I didn't have a choice. Right. So I, I started calling like FISBOs, expires. Much didn't come from that, but that led to where I am now. Okay, good. We'll try and help you with all of that. Excellent. Giselle, how about yourself? Hi, I'm Giselle. Um, I've had my license since 2006. I'm with the uh, Morristown office. Um, I actually still work full time, nine to five. I work for JLL, which is a commercial real estate company. So I manage um, leases. And I, I want to say this year was the first year that I finally said, you know what, I want to have more control over my future, over my, my retirement money, 
over my success. I want to just break through that glass ceiling. So I have been putting a lot more effort into it this year. Um, I am on the road for four units by the end of the year. And Excellent. my goal for next year is to, to have 24 units. Well, Beautiful. Yeah. it's all attainable. Sure. Absolutely. Good. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Jocelyn, how about yourself? Hello. How are you? Good. I am getting onboarded this week. So oh, yes, okay. yes. I'm excited. So I'm a brand new agent. Um, I do have 20 plus years of sales and business development experience, um, but I'm learning the real estate business. Okay. So it sounds like we have a bunch of newer folks. Anybody that's been in here and that's doing 10 or 20 or 30 transactions or maybe more where everybody is newer and we're here to try to figure out how do I get there? Sounds like. Good. All right. So let me kind of jump on in and let's work on this for that us then. Let me get back over, get this going. There's a lot of great content in here for us. Um, I need my other screen here. Good. How are you? Okay. Good. Um, a lot internet lead generation capture conversion. I was on the call yesterday with Tom. I, I see some of you were on there with it as well. Also, it was a similar session. I haven't been on any of the others. So I'm not sure what any of the others were like. I don't believe in going through slides and death by slide and everything else. I'm going to have a lot of conversation. Anybody has any questions? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by this? Stop me. You're not going to stop my presentation. You're not going to ruin it or anything else. Everybody else probably has the same questions, thoughts, concerns. There's no magic pill. I just got off the phone with, if anybody knows him, Rick Scott. He's the OP up in Ridgefield and co-owner for the Stanford Market Center. Uh, myself, I used to be the market center OP for Wallingford Cheshire Territory from 2005 to 2010. Ruth and I own that. We went back and we sold it in 2010 after the market was crashing, just kind of coming through the recovery. We wanted to go back and focusing, working on our clients. So him and I were just having a conversation. We said, there is no silver bullet. There is no great what's this one thing what's this silver bullet that's going to get me into production that's going to make my life great so i could have this next year i can stop working my full-time job i could do these vacations i could have more food with my meals that kind of thing there is no silver bullet however there is one really really important piece and i know i heard tom speaking about it yesterday it's scripts Scripts are, scripts don't make us sound like salespeople. They don't make us sound like we sell vinyl siding or quick, you need to sign this contract now, or I'm not going to have any food with my meals and the client doesn't feel the warm and fuzzies. It's about scripts. It's about, I got to move us out of the way. I don't have everybody up on screen when I share. I only have about four people. So if anybody has something to say, instead of raising a hand, because I may not see you with the number of people that are on here, just give a shout out, please. Um, I am here, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Thanks for joining us. So main ideas, things that we're covering, it's lead capture conversion. Tom was talking about some of it yesterday. I'm talking more about on the internet side. However, I don't look at internet as a piece of the only piece of the business. Where's our business come from? I'm going to talk about that. The four C's, the conversations, conversions, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of this stuff that they have in the training slides that's up on here, you all received the package earlier. Customers, Uber connected, internet, social media, where's the business all coming from? It all comes back to what I was saying earlier. It comes down to scripts. There's three things. One is whether it's somebody that you met at the market, whether it's somebody that is on the PTA, PTO for your kids, you're on a sports event, 
they came into you from your Facebook, social media, your website, some other presence, it all comes back down to scripts and it all comes down to just three things, guys. It comes down to saying the right thing, say it enough times, and have enough people to say it to. I get that from a great mentor of mine that I've been working with for about five years or so now. It's Ben Kinney, if anybody's heard of him. Again, the three things are say the right thing, say it enough times, have enough people to say it to. Saying the right thing is what I was talking about a moment ago. You run into the store, you run into the market, somebody hits you up on your Facebook page or your website. It's about scripts. It's, it's Saying the right thing is a script issue. Scripts are really knowing the questions to ask. Scripts are not about having slick things to say to people. Say it enough times, it's an activity issue. And as we go through these next couple of slides in here, it's, it talks a lot about this. Say enough times is an activity issue. An activity issue, I'm gonna just stop us from sharing for a moment just so I can kind of see everybody. An activity issue is making sure that we're time blocking. Um, I should have it up on this screen. Activity issue, have enough times, where did it go to? Um, going to be here. Sorry, guys. This here. What does your calendar look like? What's your activity issue look like? Here's the perfect agent schedule sample. I wake up. I got to do some role playing. I do some follow up. I have some lunch. I go on appointments. I go on more appointments. We're in business to have our own business, to run our own business for our food, for our families. So that when you promise to the kids, yeah, kids, we're going to go to Disney this year and come three months before your planned vacation, are you, are you disappointed the kids? Are you telling them, sorry, guys, we can't go to Disney this year. Mom or dad didn't do what I promised that I would do, and that's stick to my schedule. I'm going to have a meeting in the morning. I'm going to do role play scripts. I'm going to do my lead generation. I'm going to do lead follow-up. I'm going to take a break, make sure I get some lunch. Excuse me one second. Sorry, background noise. I apologize, guys. We need to take a break throughout the day. Even when you're doing your lead generation, in here it talks about lead generation, talk about lead generation two hours a day. I typically start my day nine o'clock in the morning with script practice for 30 minutes. Then I work on my lead generation from that 9.30 to 11.30. Then I have a staff meeting at that point. Then I work on lunch and I work on my appointments in the afternoon. That's the perfect agent schedule. Or does your schedule look like this? I got to take the kids in. I got to get the oil change. Maybe I'll do a little bit of lead generation. I'm going to go play tennis or bridge or take in a printer or have some lunch, go do some yoga, closings, haircut appointment. Are you focusing on what you want to focus on? I, I'm hearing from everybody on here that you're doing some business, you're newer, you're starting. Work on a schedule for yourself. Um, it, whether it's your team leader that's in the office to help you with it, if you want to ever feel free to reach out, connect with me. Feel free, guys. I will drop in here my contact information. Um, there's my contact information. Feel free, reach out, connect with me. Anytime you want, if I can help, that's great. If I can get you connected back with your team leader and help with the training on that piece as well also, absolutely, beautiful. Let me jump back into our slide over here because I, I want to go back to this other piece that we were talking about is say the right thing, it's a script issue. Say it enough times, it's an activity issue. We just went over your calendar. Does anybody do time blocking today? What's your calendars look like? The other piece of it is have enough people to say it to. Well, that comes down to really what this class is right here. It's a leads issue. How does your leads look? What's that look like for us? 
um, where he leads coming from. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, what do we have in here? When is a lead? So I'm going to be talking a lot of pieces that come off of here and help you guys with scripts as well also because that's why and how I drive the business as well also is scripts. I watch other agents that uh, I understand this. You heard Tom say yesterday for you, those of you that were on the call yesterday, Tom for many, many years didn't imbibe taking scripts. He would do the training. He would attend classes. He would do all of the learning and he didn't get into scripts. And it wasn't until he got into scripts that his business expanded and flourished, knowing what to say, knowing how to say it, having a tonality of the words that you use and what goes on around it. Um, come on screen. Conversion, I'll come back to that. This is a lot of everybody's personality. Are you a prisoner? Are you a vacationer? Are you an explorer? Why are you in this class in the first part? Do you just come to the class because you feel that you're the prisoner? You have to be here. You don't want to be there. You don't know why you're even here. You're not engaging. You're escaping, spending time in the hall on the phone. You're, you're out taking breaks. You're doing your email while I'm doing this. That's okay. I'm not looking to anyone to hit or blame. You're looking to grow your business. Think about where you want to be with it. Are you a vacationer? I'm in a day for the training because I'd rather be here than working my job or working my business or doing something else. There have to be fun distractions in the class or relevant comments. Spend as much time chatting and listening. Or are you the explorer? Are you the explorer that's excited and curious about the new knowledge, skills, tools? What are you going to learn? What are you hoping to get out of today's class? Now, I'm gonna come back to that in a little bit as to what is everybody hoping to get out of it? It sounds like you're trying to figure out, all right, how can I get from a couple of deals this year to can I get to two dozen deals next year? You can. You absolutely can with the focus, with the direction. Do you want to be purposeful? At the end of the day, whether it's yourself, your partner, your spouse, your kids, your family, what, were they disappointed with you at the end of the day or were they impressed with you at the end of the day with the actions that you took to get the results? Does that make sense? So that kind of breaks into their internet in real estate. It doesn't matter where these leads come from, guys. It doesn't matter. Is it from the internet? Did you do an open house? Did you run into somebody in the market? Is it your neighbor? Is it your neighbor's kids, friends, cousin that wants to buy a house in the neighborhood? Everybody sums up into the same thing. It's really the same piece. It's a lead. It's an opportunity. Somebody's raising their hand and saying, hey, I want to buy. What I find the hardest part for a lot of agents is they get these buy signals they met somebody in the market, somebody gave them their name and phone number because they knew them from an organization in town or they came into their internet and now they didn't know what to say to the people. That's usually what I find is the problem with that. And then people vacillate, all right, well, let me go do research on this person. Let me go see where this person came from. Does this person have a home to sell? Did they buy a home? They get stuck in this bunny trail and they're getting ready to get ready versus, hey, I have this lead. They connected. They were on my site. Let me just pick up the phone and make a phone call. Has anybody ever gotten hurt from making a phone call? What's the worst that they could say? No, go away. You're a jerk. I didn't call you. I don't know why you're calling me in the first place. I get all of these all day long. Why are you calling me? There's a lot of scripts. There's a lot of conversation. I'm going to kind of jump into those for you. Here's a great one for you. Um, let's see. I've got a bunch of them that I put down on here from notes first so that we can discuss them. Here's an apology script. Somebody came into your website. They came in as an internet, possible wanting to know the valuation of their home. Hey, Tony, thanks. I'm glad that you answered. It's just simply an apology script. Hey, Tony, thanks. I'm glad that you answered. I was calling to apologize. I just was notified that somebody probably requested the value of the home and want to give you the information that you gave was so broad. 
it obviously wasn't valuable to you. The reason we're just missing some information about the details of your home to allow us to give you an accurate assessment. So I'm gonna reach out, quickly talk to you, Tony, so you don't think I dropped the ball and ask you a couple of questions. Would, the, would that be fair? Is that okay, Tony? It's just a script, but it's you're starting off with an apology script. You're apologizing to them that, hey, I have some information. I don't have all of the information. They're getting calls from agents all day long. Yeah, hey, Tony, hi, I saw you up on my website today. How can I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm not interested. Thanks, bye, click. You're already starting off with not being able to have a conversation with them. So a lot of it is, again, coming back to our scripts. Where do buyers come from? Where do sellers come from? We know they're all starting their search on the net, whether it's from an open house, whether it's from the internet, as far as that goes. Here's some great truths for you in real estate. A great website may bring you a lot of visits, but it takes more than a great website to get customers. If you have a system in place to capture buyers and sellers and have a system to convert them, the internet can yield great leads. It's not just the internet, guys. It's no matter where they came from. All these people I was just talking to you about, you saw Mary in the market picking up fish for dinner or whatever the case may be, or you saw your kids friends, parents on the sidelines with sports or whatever the case may be. If you don't have a system in place, whether it happens to be command, whether it happens to be a notebook, whether it happens to be Excel, a database that you pay for, have some kind of a system in place. Know that, great, I collected this person's name, email, phone number. Are they thinking about buying? Are they thinking about selling? then have a reason to get back in touch with them. The reason is simply, maybe you saw that you're, you're using command. If people are using command, I don't use command, I use a different system. On the back end of my system, I see when people look at see 123 Main Street, pick up the phone, give them a call, say, hey, Jocelyn, I see that you were just looking over at 123 Main Street, that's a great property. Don't be afraid to call them and let them know that you could actually see what they're seeing on the back end. It's okay. This is the world of internet and technology. Does anybody have any problems with picking up the phone and calling people? Everybody can call somebody, right? Uh, why are buyers out there? Why are sellers out there? So whether it's an open house lead, I'm going to use again this generically open house lead the market the internet why are sellers coming to us they're looking to browse to analyze the market they're looking for comparables they're looking for agents that they can talk to they want to understand the selling process same thing with the buyers the difference is sellers they're raising a hand they may be ready now they may be ready in seven to nine months the same thing with buyers same thing if you went to the car lot to go looking at a car and you walk in, you may be looking now, you may be just thinking about it. It's about having a great script for when they're coming to your open house, whether they're coming to your internet site, whether they're asking you about the market while you're, well, asking about the real estate market while you're at the market buying food. Hey, Mary, thanks for asking me about that. I find that people come to our open house or people come to our internet for one or two reasons. Either you're a seller trying to get information about the market or you're a buyer thinking about purchasing a home. Which one are you? It's just a script and a conversation so that you're not having verbal diarrhea when you're talking to people. Thoughts, comments, and engagement from anybody. It helps a little bit when we go back and forth, but if not, I can just keep on going as well also. I have a lot of scripts here, so it's fine. Internet technology. What is anybody using for tracking? What are you guys doing? How do you track your people today? Give me an example. Paul, Marcos, Alexis, Chris, Tony, Stanley, Jocelyn, anybody. How do you track your people today? Right now, I primarily use command. Um, I mean, it's free to us, so, and it, it has like reminders, stuff you can do. Um, so my go-to is command. Perfect. Anybody else? So right now I, I'm starting to put my people into command also because yeah. I'm all over the place. I'm disorganized. I have everyone all over the place. 
<laughs> Typical. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Anybody else? Take one more. I'm also using command. Um, for the most part, I just had all of my contacts uploaded from my um, phone and like my Google contacts to command. Perfect. That is excellent. So whether you're using command, whether you're using anything else, that's the right place to start, Alexis. When I have a new agent, I've got a brand new agent. He's just trying to get his license right now. And his task was give me 200 people, put them on a spreadsheet, and I'll have staff upload them for you. If all you have is a name and a phone number, that's fine. If you have an email address, that's great as well also. If you don't have home addresses, you only have some bits. And, you, everybody has a name and a phone number in their phone. You may not have contacts. The same problem comes when it's an internet lead. What is that? That's an opportunity for you. So everybody can come up with 200 names. At the end of the day, if you really think about it, dig through your phone. I'm sure you have hundreds of contacts in your phone, people that you know from different areas, whatever the case may be. Name, phone number, it gives you a reason to give them a call. Hey, Paul, I was just going through my phone and didn't know if you knew it or not. However, I just started my own business. And I started my own, real, my own business and I, I'm a realtor at this time. By the way, what's your real estate related plans? It's having a script that comes up to it. Paul, the reason I'm giving you a call today is it's a business conversation. I know that we know each other through so-and-so and I just wanted to connect with you because I only have your phone number in my phone and I started real estate as my business and for me and my family, for my, I got rid of my job and I started a business. Would you mind if I got your home address and your email from you? Would that be all right? And by the way, would it be all right if I kept you up to date as to what's going on with the real estate market from time to time? I'm struggling with that a little bit because Go ahead. Because I'm full time, um, obviously, like I have a full time job. Sure. I struggle with a script to say like, hey, you know, I'm doing real estate because a lot of people, um, they think, oh, so you're not, you're just a part time agent. You're not going to put the attention on me that I really would appreciate, right? From a full time agent. So in terms of trying to maybe pivot that conversation so that they understand that, yes, I am transitioning over into a full-time agent, which quite frankly, being a part-time agent still feels like it's full-time. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly does. Yes, it does. But, but um, you know, how, how would you, how would you say though, say that, like, how would you propose being this part-time agent transitioning to full-time, you know, so and let, let me ask you, Giselle, you're, you're in a market center, you're surrounded by a lot of people in your market center. Could you partner with somebody that is a top producing team for your business that comes your way and let your people know I'm part of this team mm -hmm. while I'm transitioning into full time out of this for the best piece for me and my family to start my business. And I'm going to make sure I'm available for you all the time. However, I'm partnering with the top 1% team in our office so that you don't have part-time service. You are looking for the best real estate team in the area, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So whether you are, whether you're not partnering with the team, that was just kind of a question. It may be something that you may want to think about because you might be able to get yourself three, five, six, eight, twelve referrals over the course of the next couple of months and refer them to the team. Mm -hmm. At that point, you're still getting paid your referral fee. Right. And you still can make time to shadow all of that piece of business. So while you're still working your full hot piece of the business, and it's hard because we have another agent. She's a client of ours that is, she got her license and she is a controller for an international construction company and really is doing the same thing that you're doing, Giselle. She really wants to get there. Mm -hmm. And she sends us referrals from time to time and she tries to make the time, but her full-time job takes her away from it. So a lot of it is shadowing whenever possible. Hey, when you're going out on showings, make sure you can go out and go take that hour or an hour and a half and go out with the other agent so that you understand what they're saying, so that you learn the scripts, you understand about homes and the practice piece of it. Does that help a little bit? 
yes it does um like, some... you know, i've been a solo agent for such a long time so yep. so just knowing because I, because I do take out buyers it's just more so trying to get new clients, people maybe outside of my sphere that don't know it. well actually no people are even with, within my sphere <laughs> right exactly <laughs> right and and some of it is it gets frustrating for the outside agents as well also that's working with you because when a full-time agent's calling a part-time agent and i'm calling them at 9 15 in the morning or 8 45 or 10 30 and all i get is voicemail and i only get callbacks at 6 30 at night when i'm already done for the evening and then i get calls later on at eight o'clock when they want to i'm like we get frustrated mm -hmm. so when you have full-time people that you could share that business with that will help you a lot um have you thought about taking and i'm not trying to get sidetracked here i'm looking at the time here have you thought about taking that business that you could refer out if you could grow that business bigger and better with a team? Would you have more business because of the team? Mm -hmm. Would you get business from there as well, as well as you referring that business on a full-time basis? And could you save all of that commission so that you have six months of income saved up so that you could leave your full-time job and focus on your business? That's don't cool. need an answer for it. Just the thought of don't spend that real estate money until you have six months of living income reserves built up. Save it in bank, separate account. Don't use it. It's not play money or anything else. Would you feel comfortable leaving your full-time job to go do that? Just a thought. Don't need to answer it. Thank you. Sure thing. Um, come back in. So going back to the database, going back to talking about that piece of it, have a system in place so that you know your people, you know how you can get in touch with them. That's the biggest part about learning to grow this piece of the business is not having a system in place for you. Those of you that are using command, that's wonderful in there. I know there's smart plans, dig into the smart plans on the, on the software that I use, they happen to be called auto plans. Same kind of thing. They're a system that says, I woke up today. Here's the people I need to call. And by the way, here's the emails that went out in the last 24 hours. And here's all of the texts that went out automatically as well also. Would it benefit you to have that going out to your clients so that you have that system in place? Knowing the system, having the system, that's what you need. Because without having the system in place, you don't know who you're going to wake up and call every single day. And you're going to get ready to get ready for your lead generation. If your people are in your database and they're tagged as buyers, buyer prospect, sell a prospect. Well, great. You know what? I'm going to call all my buyer prospects today. Tomorrow, I'm going to call all my seller prospects. Day after that, I'm going to call expired sellers. And I'm going to have scripts for that. I don't want to dive too much into the scripts. I have a lot of scripts. I'd be happy to role play, script play with you offline, that kind of thing. I just keep bringing it back to that because that's the reason for it. Internet, it's there. It's here. There's no mystery about it. It's a matter of how are people finding you. Are they finding you? Or are they finding somebody on Redfin? Or are they going to Zillow and finding an agent that pays for an ad? Uh, four conversations. This all goes back to the database. It all goes back to getting the information, connecting with them, cultivating them, and converting to a piece of business. We only have a couple of things to do as a realtor. We need to make phone calls. We need to make contacts. We need to have conversations. We need to write contracts. We need to have closings. Those are the five pieces of business that we need to make sure that we're doing so that we have food with our meals at the end of the day. And all of that comes through picking up the phone, knowing your numbers. Um, I am on this computer here. So when I come to knowing your numbers, Tony, Jocelyn, Giselle, a couple of other people who said, I want to do 24 deals this year. That's great. Do you know what that equates to? Do you know how much money that equates to? Do you know what your average sale price is? Knowing your numbers in the business is a big piece of it as well also if you haven't taken the emria classes or understood them main real estate agent if you haven't read the 
Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. It's a great book to read. <laughs> Sorry, distraction. Um, Sorry. It's okay. It was just in my video, just letting you know. So knowing your numbers, I use a program. It's called CTE. Many of the market centers offer it. In there, you can plug in your numbers. You can know what's going on. Why do I bring this up? Because it's so important to know that. I'm going to give you an example. If you want to do $50,000 this year, I don't know what your number is. It's all math. However, if you want to do $50,000 this year, going through the millionaire real estate agent model, it comes down and it tells me that I need to do 15 deals for the year at an average sale price of $250,000, which is the average across the country. Happens to be the average in my area in Cheshire, Connecticut, my 40 minute radius I work. Your areas in Jersey, Trumbull may be a little bit higher. Trumbull's not so much higher, but Jersey may be a bit higher. But that average sale price of $250,000, I want to do $50,000. That means I need to close 15 deals for the year. Simple math. However, what does that break down to? Well, work it backwards. It means that I need to write 18 contracts. It means I need to make 23 appointments for the year to make 23 appointments for the year to write 18 contracts to get 14 to close for the year gets you to $50,000. You want to do a hundred, just double those numbers. However, the important part about that though, about knowing your numbers is to get there. You need to make about a hundred. It's actually 107 contacts for the month. What does that mean, 107 contacts for the month? Geez, that sounds like a lot. You break it down, we're working five days a week, guys. It's only five contacts a day. If you're making five contacts a day, whether it's through your internet lead generation, whether it's through your open houses, wherever these leads happen to come from, it's just basics. Five contacts a day, 100 contacts for the month should get you 23 appointments to work with a buyer or a seller for the month should get you 18 contracts for the, excuse me, 23 contracts for appointments for the year, 18 contracts for the year, 14 closed, 15 closed, it's 14.8 for the year. It's a little over one a month. That's doable, isn't it? Does five contacts a day to pick up the phone and call them seem overwhelming to get there? If you want to get to 100,000, just double the numbers. Instead of five contacts a day, it's 10 contacts a day. Yeah, it's 200 for the month. And if you want to look at it that way, oh my gosh, it's 200 for the month. Oh my God, I got to make 2,400 contacts. No, you're not making 2,400 contacts. That's over the course of the year. Break it down into nibble bites for each day. Easy? I saw Tony smiling before, like, yeah, it doesn't sound too hard. I got that. Break it down into finding people that are mofer. Make an offer for immediate response. Find the people that, and categorize them in your database. People that are hot, people that are nurtured, people that are unqualified. Use the LP Mama script with them. And I'll go into that for you in a moment as well also. But what you're looking for is people are up on your website. People came to you, whether you're doing Facebook ads, whether you are met them in the market, wherever people are coming from in your database. If somebody's reaching out to you and say, hey, Giselle, I'd like to buy a house. Great. No problem. They sent you an email. If you don't get back to that for two or three days, do you think that they think you're serious? Probably not. If you get in touch with them right away, a lot of people are afraid to make a voicemail. A lot of people are afraid to make voicemails and leave them, hey, Mary, I just saw that you were up on my website. I have a couple of questions for you. Can you give me a call? It's a simple script. Just talk to them as if it was a friend or a family. <clears throat> Don't try and have a slick salesperson conversation. And there's a lot of other scripts. As you go through your packet that's in there, there's some scripts in there. Think about if somebody was saying them to you, how would you feel about it? Um, 
capture on your internet. You've all been there. You click on something, skinny bait, fake bait, fat bait. I call it clickbait. I, I picked that up from somebody else as well also. You, you're looking around for a house. Next thing you know, you got sidetracked and you're buying this coffee mug online because you saw some ad on Facebook. And next thing you know, it says, great, I'm going to order it. And now it's going to be in in the next seven to 12 weeks because it's coming from China. Versus if you stayed focused on what you were looking at, you were there. That clickbait is just to get your information. That's all that it is. You need to have this and command has it. <clears throat> This is what I was going back to earlier when you have your 200 names, your 200 contacts, whether it's 100, 50, 200, try and get the most. If all you have is just a phone number, call them. Let them know you're in business. I'm here to be here for you. I work with a full-time team. I have nothing but professionals standing behind me. Tony, your office, you said you're in trouble. We have about 125 agents in the office. Know your numbers in the office. A lot of what you said, Giselle, earlier is, well, people view me as part-time. Some of that also comes down to full-time agents. A lot of people view them as part-time because they're not knowledgeable, because they don't know what's going on in the market as to what's happening. Um, there's a couple of pieces I want to fast forward into here and here. This talks about capturing information, getting registration, Connecting with them, purpose of connecting, identifying motivation, setting the appointment. We spoke about this, providing customer answers, building rapport, building the relationship, move a buyer to a pre-approval. So let me come back into here. And I said I would have this with you. It is, let me pick on somebody new. Alexis, thanks for reaching out to me about your home purchase opportunity and that you guys are looking to buy a home just out of curiosity where are you looking to buy a home you want alexis you ready to role play you want to have some fun sure i'm ready okay all right i love putting people on the spot this is going to be about me trying to help with the script for everybody else on here so i'm not going to hurt you or blame you be all right i apologize yeah. in advance i have three dogs and they decided to just now start making noise. That's okay. Don't worry about it. I've got a dog in the house here and a wife that was just outside banging off the rugs. We're away for the month. So we're trying to uh, get some stuff done also. Don't worry about it. Okay. <clears throat> Alexis, thanks for uh, jumping onto my website. I saw that you had raised your hand. You're interested about the house over at 123 Main Street. Hey, is that location, is that the ideal location of where you're looking to buy a home? It is in that area. It is. That's great. Excellent. So I know you were curious about what the price was because you just saw the sign. And, and while I take a look at that, let, let me ask, have you guys been out looking for a while? About three months. About three months. Wow. That, that's great. So let me ask you, in the last three months, is there a reason why you haven't bought a home? Um, we just haven't found anything that suits our needs. You, you haven't. Wow. That, that's great. So uh, let, let me ask you, what, what does that suit your needs look like for you? Um, I'm looking, we're looking for about, for three bedrooms and we want a basement. Three bedrooms and you want a basement. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. There's certainly some opportunities out there with us. Excellent. So let, let me ask you, Alex, are you already working with a realtor? Did you sign a contract to work with a realtor already? No, not yet. You haven't. Okay. So no problem. So I, I just pulled this up for us, Alexis, and I see that the house is priced at $287,000. Does that seem to be in the price range of what you guys are thinking about? Yes, we're looking from 250 to 400. 250 to 400. Great. That's an excellent range. I love that. So let me ask you, how'd you come up with those kinds of numbers? Um, so based off of, um, so we looked at the numbers based off of whether or not um, the home is ready to renovate or whether or not we'd have to put work in. Obviously, for, if we're looking in the 400 range, we want something that is move-in ready, but we're willing to do, put some work in at a lower range. That, that, that's great. Thanks for sharing that with me. I, I've got a lot of other questions for you about that, circling around about that. But as you mentioned that broad range, I'm just curious, have you already spoken to a mortgage broker to understand the math and the numbers behind mortgage interest rates or interest rates or what interest rates are? I, I've 
the interest rates for the last 15, 20 years have been around this 5%. Now they're floating around this 3%. They haven't changed too much, but have you spoken to a mortgage broker to understand the math of what closing costs are, what your monthly payments would look like? And more importantly, have you asked them the reverse mortgage question that I'm sure you're probably comfortable with a payment today of X dollars. And what would that equate to into a purchase price tomorrow? Have you spoken to a mortgage broker and understand that kind of important information so you don't get disappointed later on looking at a home that you may not be able to afford? I have not yet spoken to a mortgage broker. Do you have anyone that you would recommend? We do. We have a couple of great ones. So that's where I would always recommend for you that talk to them. You may be comfortable with a $1,500 a month payment today. And you may be surprised that that $1,500 a month payment you could buy a house up to X. However, keep in mind mortgage rates at 3%, it's $3 per 10,000. So if you wanna buy a house, it's $50,000 more. It's only about an extra $15. It's less than the cost of this cup for the month. So it's things that you should be speaking to a mortgage broker about. Does that make sense? Yes. Excellent. So I've got this pulled up for us. I have some other homes that may fit well in there for us as well also. But I'm going to be in the area later on today. Are you and your husband available at three o'clock or is 4.30 better for us to go see this home and a couple of others? Three o'clock works. Great. So in the meantime, would you mind reaching out to the mortgage broker to make sure it were qualified and we're good to go for that? Is that okay? Sure thing. There you go. That's LP Mama. Location, price, motivation. Are you working with an agent? Mortgage. And lastly, what's our job? Set an appointment. Does that make sense? Hi, yes. Can you please read it? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I should have had that off screen share the whole time. I apologize. Go ahead, Isabel. No, I was asking you if you can repeat the last part that you, you know, you went through all the points. Can you repeat that part? Absolutely. It's LP Mama. Location, price, motivation, agent. Are you working with another agent? Mortgage. And lastly, appointment. Our job is to set appointments. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Did somebody else have something that I heard? It was just that, that same question. Got it. Okay. Beautiful. That's just part of having a conversation, guys. That, that's all I'm trying to get to here. All of this internet lead generation, where do appointments come from, where do leads come from, learn scripts, you'll learn to have good business conversations because all scripts again are is knowing questions to ask. Um, a lead comes in. I don't care where the lead comes in to have a system that we spoke about earlier. Have a system that works. This one here, I'm just looking at this one. This is call back within three to seven minutes. If busy, five, five to 10 minutes, try three times, be friendly, be relaxed, just as I am right now with you. Always ask, answer questions and with questions. Answer questions with questions. That's scripts. Well, I want to be over by here. Great. So what's important to you about being over in that neighborhood? I didn't dig deep enough with us to Alexis to do the time, but location and price, I would have dug a lot deeper. Motivation, I would have dug a lot deeper. And then close for the appointment. This let you see it on screen is part of what's called 10 days of pain. The lead comes into you, call them back immediately. Call back within three to seven minutes. If not, they're calling somebody else or they've already been on five other websites. And by the time you call them back, they don't even know what website they were on when you call them back or who you even are. And by then they've already gotten six or seven phone calls. And now they're feeling, oh my gosh, swamped. I know that. We have all, uh, let me get off of this. I know that we've all fallen into that trap. You jumped on a site, you want to check out about solar or maybe insurance or maybe a car or something else. And then how many phone calls did you get in the next half hour and continue to get for the next number of days and weeks? A lot of them. Same thing happens with us in real estate. By the time you get in touch with them, if you're not first and quick to act, somebody else is going to be there and your job is to have that first conversation with them. And then have that system in place. So this is talking about that system in place 
is try calling him back three times. Everybody likes doing something differently. A lot, some people say, call back three times. Don't leave a voicemail. You, you've all heard that. Somebody's called me three times. Oh my gosh, this must be important. I have to answer the phone. You know what? I don't answer my phone when I see three phone calls back three at a time. Me personally, and we all do it differently. I'm calling somebody that's a lead. I'm leaving a message. I leave it right off the bat. First time. Hey, Joe, this is Sam. Thanks. You reached out to us. I have a question for you about your house. Can you give me a call when you get a chance? Here's my number. Simple, easy. Outreach to the person. Connect with people. Introduce yourself. Here's some questions. Are you finding homes on the internet? How long have you been looking? What's prompting you to move? What are you looking for in a dream home? They're just prodding questions. However, when you're talking to people, just talk to them as if they were your friend or your family member or somebody that you actually like. Does that make sense? Uh, this here, outcome, you don't reach them, leave a message. Again, I said I'm huge on leaving messages. Have a series of scripted voicemail messages. It doesn't necessarily mean pre-recorded messages. It just means here's a couple of two or three things I know I'm going to say every time I leave a voicemail. Mine happens to be, hey, thanks for reaching out to me. I have a question. Give me a call and you get a chance. Do people call back? Sometimes. Do they not? Sometimes. It's okay. Have enough leads that you can just keep on calling people cultivating them, make sure you stay in constant contact with them. So let me ask people, where are we? Let me ask people, do you know your market? Do you know what's going on in your market? We have about another six minutes or so here or so. Do you know what's happening in your real estate market for the area that you work, that you service? The only thing that separates you as newer agents to a seasoned agent, somebody that will tell you, and you, I'm sure you've heard these agents, I've been doing this 20 years, I know exactly what I'm doing. And they sell 12 homes a year. They sell 15 homes a year. I'm, I've been doing it, I'm a veteran, I've been doing this 18 years. I really don't care. The only thing that separates you from that seasoned person for years is knowing the market, time in the market. Did you know in my current market right now, here in the state of Connecticut, Okay, here's what I'm going to pull up. The state of Connecticut MLS right now. There's 182 homes in the last 24 hours that got listed new to the market. There's 325 nearly that went on deposit. And there's 260 that sold and closed in the last 24 hours. If you're speaking to somebody that you run into the market or that's asking you, hey, Lisa, how's the market? It's a great question. Why do you ask? Oh, well, I was thinking about selling. Well, excellent. Well, did you know that in the last 24 hours, 150 homes came new to the market and nearly double 300 went on the contract deposit? It means we have very little inventory. Why? Are you thinking about selling in the near future, Lisa? That kind of stuff. Know your market. That's what separates you from a seasoned agent is being able to know the market know what's going on inside of there. Make sense? And, and you do that with uh, yeah, meeting somebody at a social event that asks how the market is. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, Paul that's, Paul, that's a great question. I'm on Smart MLS right now, right on the front screen, opening up my MLS. It's a box right up top. It says Market Watch. I think you guys have pretty much the same MLS in Jersey as well. Also New York, you don't have one, unfortunately. So it's all different. You guys know your numbers differently. Can you share the screen? Um, I, I, was, I, I was actually going to ask my team leader that question on how to find that information. Sure. Give me one second and let me share this because I need to get in there because it's not open. Let me move this out of the way. I have it open on my of the computer. So let me just get this open quick enough. Where is this one? This is OK. 
Okay, this is Ruth's MLS, so hers is in a little different position than mine. Here's your market watch right here. This is seven days. You click on it, here's the last 24 hours. Did you know in the last 24 hours, 42 homes came to the market and over 100 homes went under contract? And by the way, 80 homes sold and closed. So you're right, Paul. You're out at a marketing event. You're out someplace. You're at a networking event. You're at a chamber event. You're someplace. Somebody asks you, hey, how's the market? The market's great. Why do you ask? Did you know in the last 24 hours, did you know in any given period of time, did you know since COVID hit on March 13th, did you know that in the last year, this is what the market has been doing? If you watch this, something as basic as this, you watch this every day, you make the, will you be more knowledgeable than your typical agent in your area, than many agents in your office? Be the economist of choice. That's a lot of what all this comes down to. I know this is a lead generation conversation. However, it's really digging deeper, guys. It's knowing the market, being the economist of your neighborhood, your town, your county, whatever you happen to work, whatever area you happen to work. Hey, did you know that? Hey, Mary, what about that house that just came up on a market on 123 Main Street? Do you have a watch list set up for yourself, for your towns that you want to work in? So that when a new listing comes to market or a new listing went to contract, that that pops up in your email as a watch list that you would send out to your clients. This way you're knowledgeable as to what's coming up. So when Ryan calls me and says, hey, Sam, you know about 123 Main Street? Actually, yeah, Ryan, I just saw that come on the market this morning. That looks like a great house. I'm planning on going and seeing it later on this afternoon. You want to go see it with me? That kind of conversation. The other piece that I'm going to leave you with as I wrap this up, and there's a lot more I can keep on talking about, is when you have clients that want to know about the market, if you don't have a database, if you don't have a CRM, if you're using command or you're using something else, again, my system is different that I use than other people use. Use the multiple listing service. You have a seller that's thinking about or a buyer that's thinking about, I wanna buy a home in this town for this price range. What do you do? Go on to multiple listing service immediately. Say, great, no problem. Hey, Paul, would it be all right? I, Paul, I wanna get you some information about the market. I know you're really thinking about selling, probably maybe not for the next six to 18 months. Would it be all right if I kept you up to date on the market? Absolutely, Sam, that'd be great. Well, great, no problem. Hey, Paul, I wanna make sure I have your email address. What's a great email address for you? Oh, by the way, I may not have your home address. What is that? Get that information, put it in your system. Go back to your computer, open up MLS, say, great, I wanna buy a house in Trumbull for $300,000. Well, go do a multiple listing residential search for houses priced $250,000 to $400,000. Get him set up on a watch list so that when new listing come out or go on the contract, he gets that email immediately. Do you think that that would be a value to Paul to see that and then eventually give, give you a call one day, Giselle, and say, hey, Giselle, you know what? I think the time's right. I, I finally ready to get the house on the market. When can you come over? And that's just constant contact. That's just dripping over time, staying in touch with that person. Make sense, guys? Yes, thank you so much. It was very helpful. There's a lot of other stuff and I can go on for much, much longer. However, I wanna respect your time as well also. We committed to an hour, so I'm gonna open it up. If anybody has questions, ahas, I'm here for that now. Yes, I wonder what was the eight in the app mama, the first A. Oh, in LP Mama. mama. Yes. Agent. Agent. Because you have agent again at the uh, no, no, the last one is appointment. Appointment. Location, price, motivation, agent. Yes. So you have an agent twice then at the beginning and before the last. No, no, no. Location. Location. Price. Price. Motivation. Agent. Mortgage. And appointment. 
Oh, okay. The first I saw was an A, an S N A, an S N L location. It's great. L L L P Mama. Yes. Okay. Great. Yes, I had it wrong. Thank you so much. That's okay. Absolutely. Thank you for asking, Teresa. That's very easy. It's a wonderful way to remember what to ask and what to say. It's possible. Just, yeah, just write it on a piece of paper and keep it next to your computer when you're talking to people. Exactly. It, that's it, what I thought to do. <laughs> yeah, Thank you just, so much. That was very good. For sure. It's just going to help you with conversation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anything else? Anybody, please. Sam, um, just a couple of things. If you can put your contact information again. Sure. Um, and I, I don't know if anyone, I'm going to put my contact information. If anyone wants a role play, um, you can text or email me. We can set up a time. There's my contact info again. Oh. Oh, hold on. Let's try that again. Uh, that just went to you privately. Sorry about that. Let's make that to everybody. There we go. My website is right there. That's my website, which is ctproperties.net. Feel free to take a look on that, how we do stuff, that kind of thing. Um, for sure. I happen to do my script practice every morning at nine o'clock and I do that with Craig Goodliff. Craig is a KW maps coach and Craig owns the company called Cyberbacker. That's where we get our virtual assistance from and every morning from nine thirty, nine o'clock to nine thirty, there's typically anywhere from 30 to 50 plus people scripting and doing role play practice for a half hour. I've been doing What's that. I'm sorry, what's the name of the company? Cyber Backer, C-Y-B-E-R, like cyber, like computer cyber, Backer, uh -huh. B-A-C-K-E-R. I'll put it into the box here. Thank you. Sam, question about uh, buyer pre-qualification for a mortgage. Um, some buyers will, will get a pre-qual before they even start looking so they know what they can potentially buy. Some buyers, wait to do that and until they see something they like uh how far will you go with uh with a buyer client uh before you insist that they uh they have a prequel rarely if ever will we take a client out to go see a property that has not been bothered to take 15 or 20 minutes of their time to speak to a mortgage broker to get pre-qualified to know that they're not wasting my time. And more importantly, they're not wasting their own time. And sometimes that's a great conversation. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm well qualified. Excellent. You know what? I just want to make sure that we're not going to at any time be wasting your time and getting you disappointed for a home that a mortgage broker says you may not be qualified for, for items that come up on your credit report that you may not be aware of. Would it be yeah, all right? It's yeah. tough because once you show them a, a home worth 450K and they they haven't been prequaled yet and they didn't realize they had to take into account, you know, their student loans and their car loan and, and well, uh, they, they're not going to like what they see at 350K. That's correct, Maureen. Absolutely. And they may also be surprised to say, well, I really only want to buy a house that is going to cost me $1,500 a month. Well, they may be surprised from speaking to a mortgage broker that if they bought a house for $1,850 a month, how much more purchase power they may be able to buy because at any given $50,000 increments, those houses change dramatically. The other Absolutely. Thing, the other thing that I found is not only that they get disappointed, but which house we are going to show them if they don't really know how much they have been approved. And if they feel that they already know and they have not done the work as to speak with somebody to pre-qualify them or pre-approve them, if maybe, especially if they are having their own business that they may need to have so many more years of income tax that they have to show. So there is a lot of things that they have to present to the loan lender that it does not take you a second to assess. So I, 
I learned that by hard work <laughs> and actually for the defeating of being showing homes, moving people around, driving them and wasting money and time and wasting your, wasting your time that you yes. could be working on somebody that's qualified. And especially now in this market that even when we bring somebody with all the pre-approvals, sure. we found that in the bidding, uh, I have been really having a hard time because I have two clients at the present times that I keep moving here and there and moving even away from the areas that they were looking and still in the bidding, they are losing and I am losing. So yeah. If they don't have a pre-approval, they're not getting a contract written and they're not getting an offer and they'll be losing a home in this market. So yeah, they need to have that, absolutely. Beautiful. Sam, one more question. You Please. said that for three, what is it for ten thousand dollars is three dollars when it comes to the mortgage? When it's three percent when it's three percent interest rate. Yeah, it's just basic math. Three percent interest rate is three dollars per ten thousand. Ah, oh, that's right. Okay, if thank it's you. Four percent interest rate is four dollars per ten thousand. Okay. So in a fifty thousand dollar more expensive home at three dollars per ten thousand, it's gonna cost an extra fifteen dollars. In their monthly okay. mortgage payment. Thank you. Absolutely. So yeah, we typically do not take buyers out if they've have if they've not signed a buyer agency agreement requirement here in the state of Connecticut. If we want to get paid through the multiple listing service, and if they're not pre-qualified. Now we may have clients that have been we've known for a long time. It's not somebody that's just coming in off the street. Hey, Sam, Ruth, I want to go see this home, blah, 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 blah. Sure, no problem. Take them out. They're excited. Let's get them going. Then we'll get the buyer agency agreement signed at the same time when we're doing the showing. We'll make sure that we try and get them a mortgage pre-approval before or at least know that they're going for it. Somebody called off the street that just called me. Isabel, if you just call me right now and say, hey, Sam, I'm in front of his house. Can you come show it to me? I'm going to really push back and tell you no. Mm-hmm. Be happy to book some time with you. I have time available later on today at four o'clock or is tomorrow at three o'clock better for you? And by the way, in the meantime, can you please email me over your pre-qualification letter? And this way I can see if there's other homes that may be of interest for you as well. It's just conversation. That's good, okay? yeah. Yes, thank you. Good guys. If you uh, want to have more of this stuff, let ta uh, <coughs> excuse me. Let Luis know. Be happy to do more stuff ongoing, not a problem. I've already committed to Louise for other sessions as well. So you guys have a great day and wish everybody a happy holiday. Thanks so Same much. Thank you, Sam. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, welcome. Bye.